So the, the Tesla, the, the new Tesla Roadster. Is probably the single biggest gullibility test ever created. You know, to tell the difference between people with a functioning brain and gullible morons. I guess Musk wasn't lying when he said, What I can say is we're going to move to just truly massive scale. Uh, scale that uh, no company has uh, ever achieved in, in, in the history of humanity. So Elon, tell me what I won't be getting for at least the next six years if I give you $50,000 now. We'll be the fastest car, production car ever made, period. Be... Wow, that sounds impressive. And when are you making these beastly cars? Uh, it's, it's the, it was the, the, the foundation of the whole company, it was the Tesla Roadster. People have asked us for a long time, when are you going to make a new Roadster? We are making it now. Yeah! Yeah. Wow, they're making it now, in 2017. And about half a decade later, in 2022, it's coming next year. And uh, in, in the, and it's Cybertruck is coming next year. We'll be in production with Cybertruck next year. Uh, we'll be in production with the Roadster and with Semi. So that's all, all coming. And then next year, in 2023, it's um, in development. Yeah, Elon Musk is such a manufacturing genius. At this point, I think I know more about manufacturing than anyone currently alive on Earth. That he can make a car half a decade before it's even been designed. So either the laws of cause and effect don't apply to Elon Musk, or everything he says here is a lie. This is the, ba this is the base model. Okay. This is the base model. We're going to talk about things beyond base maybe next year. Yeah, sure, base model. And five years later on, they're not even talking about that. That is, that is the fastest, this will be the first time that any car has broken two seconds at zero to 60. Five years later on, it's still vapor wet. It'll be the fastest to 100 miles an hour, 4.2 seconds to 100 miles an hour. These are, these are, all, these are all world records. Actually, no. They're all vaporware records. Okay, this is what we're achieving in the prototype. Yeah, right, the prototype, which curiously you never demonstrated had any of these capabilities. I wouldn't say what the actual top speed is, but it's above 250 miles an hour. The, the range, this is gonna have a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack. Six hundred and six. This is these numbers sound nutty, but they're real. No, they're not. But we'll come to why in a second. Um, 600, 620 mile range. That's a, a thousand kilometer range. This will be the first time an electric vehicle. Yeah, this is Elon Musk standing in front of a shiny red car and doing make believe improv for ten minutes straight, while the fanboys just eat up every single word of it. Breaks a thousand kilometers. A production electric vehicle will travel more than a thousand kilometers in a single charge at highway speed. Ah, Musk fans. The dumbest, most gullible simps on the planet. Musk tells them that he personally designed a special shade of red that makes the car go faster. Musk tells them he's going to use rocket technology to make a kilo of roadster lighter than a kilo of feathers. <laughs> Musk tells them that the new roadster will be powered entirely by his own vaporware promises and will require no extra energy to run. <laughs> Musk tells them that the car will sprout wings and fly. Ah, actually, that last one's mostly true. We're going to put rocket thrusters <laughs> on it. For real? Yes. What are they going to burn? Nothing. Uh, high, uh, ultra high pressure compressed air. Whoa. Just gas, air? Cold, cold gas thrusters. Not saying the next gen Roadster's special upgrade package will definitely enable it to fly short hops, 
but maybe. <laughs> Certainly possible. Just a question of safety. Rocket tech applied to a car opens up revolutionary possibilities. <laughs> I personally really think this is actually going to be happening, and he tends to not joke around with too much stuff like this. He really loves making the ludicrous happen. Actually, he more enjoys making the ludicrous not happen, which probably saved Tim's life here. You know, from being Titan sub famous. You know, small group of rich people bragging about going somewhere extreme and exotic. Not like with Apollo for science or any furthering of mankind, but for uh, sightseeing and uh, social media engagement. Which mostly just involves sitting in a really dangerous airtight metal tube for an extended period of time. But a uh, rocket version. Three, everyone say, Tim's going to the moon! Tim's going to the moon! Because I'm literally... I'm going to the moon. Like, literally, I'm going to go to the moon. I've been chosen as one of the crew members for the Dear Moon mission. Ah yes, the Dear Moon mission. Originally scheduled to be launched in 2018. That's what, uh, five years ago now? But then they decided that they weren't going to uh, human rate the Falcon Heavy. So in 2018, when they should have been going around the moon, they said they were going to do it with the BFR, which is now called Starship. Soon as they could find some people who didn't actually mind getting onto a rocket without an emergency abort system. I mean, it's not like you're ever going to need one or anything. Now, that's... Dedication. This is the future that I have been waiting for. Oh wait, that looks like the renders. We have a lot of engines missing. Look at how the engines are shut down. Tim's going to the It's still moving. Oh my gosh. No way. Oh. Look up. Look up. Oh, that looks like it's going down. You know what? I think that was the flip. Why? That was a full cartwheel. Yeah, some people take their hero worship more seriously than others. But Musk flies people safely to the International Space Station, right? And does it like a hundred times cheaper than anyone else. Well, hate to break it to you, but flight meant to low Earth orbit is pre-Apollo era technology. And as for Musk making it cheaper, well, in 2001 to 2009, you could take a trip to the International Space Station on a Soyuz for about $25 million. Even inflation adjusting that from $2,001, the worst case scenario, and taking the upper price limit, that's only about $45 million per seat. Musk has not only used reusable technology to increase that number to some $55 million, but charges NASA almost 90 for it. And yes, SpaceX, space exploration, has never explored beyond low Earth orbit. Look, when men first went to the moon, this was of course before Musk had dramatically advanced rocket technology from that dusty old NASA doctrine of failure is not an option to... Success is not what should be expected tomorrow. Um, that, that would be insane. And had personally advanced rocket technology from launching over 10 moonshot rockets without a single failure to defining success is not blowing up on the pad. Spinning, but I do want to remind everyone that everything after clearing the tower was icing on the cake. Uh, there. <laughs> I want to be clear. I have not faked this. This is the genuine reaction from SpaceX when the Starship blew up. But coming back to the Dear Moon mission. Yeah, when men first went to the moon, it was for science and for the whole of mankind. And to get at the Russians. Now it's just a bunch of vapid social media influencers on a suicidal PR trip for fanboys. And I'll bet dollars to donuts that none of them have a genuine interest in astronomy or science. In fact, hell, I'll bet most of them have never looked through a decent telescope at, say, for instance, the moon. Okay. That's the telescope. There you go. 
welcome to the surface of the moon. That's that uber magnification there. Fascinating. But coming back to the car, yeah, Musk's going to put rocket technology on his car. Not 50 year old rocket technology, of course, Musk technology. You'll be able to travel from LA to San Francisco and back at highway speed without recharging. And I'll give you the quick and dirty reason why this is dumb. The battery he's promising to put in this thing. This is going to have a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack. Is basically three times the size of a regular Tesla battery pack. And this is before you get into the whole Tesla faking its range thing. The basic accusation is Tesla wanted people to think that their cars had great range. So it would give them a aspirational range projection on full charge. Then when the battery got down to 50%, it would give them a more realistic projection. Thing is, of course, that people complained that their batteries were not delivering the range that they said. So Tesla in turn had to set up entire PR teams to tell the customers, actually, no, there's nothing wrong with your car. But whatever, we'll give Tesla their kilowatt hour ranges on these batteries. So Musk's 200 kilowatt hour battery in the Roadster will basically be three regular battery packs. And, and a regular battery pack on a regular car looks something like this. So let's tax our Photoshop skills and see if we can do three of those and get a rough idea of what it's gonna look like. And that's not a big car, not a small sports car like the Roadster. But ignoring the space filling requirements, it's dead in arrival from weight considerations as well. That battery alone will weigh about one and a half tons. The battery alone will weigh about as much as an SUV. Specifically, just the battery will weigh about as much as a Subaru Forester. So you have to build a small sports car essentially strong enough to carry a Subaru Forester. So you're probably looking at a curb weight of this thing of about three times that of a regular car. Now, I didn't know much about cars, but tripling the weight of the car and expecting to use essentially the same brakes and tires for traction seems to be rather uh, optimistic. So sure, Musk can put a 200 kilowatt hour battery into the Roadster. It's just that the battery will be approximately this size. So, uh, like, you know, there were those people who said we could put a 200 kilowatt hour battery on a sports car. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine who would say something like that, but... Uh, so we just, like, did it. I want to be clear. This is a world record-breaking sports car. And we're taking, like, uh, $50,000 deposits for this today. So, but it's a four-seater. It's not like it's, it's this is four seats. Um, it's a convertible, so it's a uh, removable roof. Um, it's a... Uh, and it has uh, tons of storage. I mean, what? What do you want from me? I've been calling this bullshit out for years. And most of the time, I should stress, getting loads of crap thrown my way by Muppets who actually believe these vaporware promises. And you know what kept me going through all of that, through all of the abuse? It was their abuse that kept me going. Joe stated his case logically and passionately but his perceived effeminate voice only through big gales of stupid laughter. The fact that they didn't just believe this bullshit, but were willing to fight to defend this bullshit kept me going. The knowledge that Ponzi schemes cannot go on forever, and that Musk's day of reckoning was in the post kept me going. Sooner or later, the richest man on the planet, who became the richest man on the planet by doing this. So it has all that functionality with four seats. No. He's going to come to the end of the road. And when he does, and the Musk fans finally have to deal with the fact that they were the gullible rubes worshipping a techno Ponzi bullshit merchant. And he tends to not joke around with too much stuff like this. He really loves making the ludicrous happen. And on that day, I'll be there watching with popcorn. Anyway, where were we? Oh yes, that's right. Six years ago, Musk. The, the, the point of doing this is to just give the hardcore smackdown to gasoline cars. In 2017, Musk promised to give a hardcore smackdown to gasoline-powered cars. Meanwhile, over half a decade later... 
I'm waiting! I'm waiting! So people have asked us for a long time, when are you gonna make a new Roadster? We are making it now. Yeah! Now, eh, Elon? I wonder what he said about 15 minutes earlier when he was unveiling the uh, Tesla Semi. Um, the, the convoy technology, the tracking technology, this is something that we are confident we can do today 10 times safer than a human driver. So this is, I want to be clear, this is something we can do now. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. And for those who don't remember, the Tesla Semi was meant to be a complete revolution in long distance trucking, delivered in 2019. And in the end, a handful of trucks were delivered in 2023 through a massively subsidized government program. PepsiCo partnered with the California Air Resources Board to make it all happen, matching its $15.4 million in incentives to purchase vehicles, including Tesla Semis, and they delivered none of the revolutionary vaporware that Musk had promised in 2017. Now, at the unveil event in 2023, they had to basically beg people to actually believe that they hadn't faked the uh, range of the truck. And we're going to post the whole video unedited on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. And uh, no jump cuts. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's referring to how they allegedly faked their original uh, full self-driving video by jump cuts and that sort of thing, which accounts for why they apparently had a level five full self-driving like five years ago, but today can't get beyond level two? Sort of glorified cruise control, that sort of thing? Yeah, there was like no fast moves here. Nope. So to be clear, it's not like, oh, what, what, did, what tricks did they pull? Wait, were there actually a whole bunch of tricks we could have pulled yeah. and didn't? <laughs> Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, like, as Dan said, like, no, no special aero treatment, uh, the... Oh, and by the way, we should mention there was yeah. no charging. Like, we, we charged the yeah, truck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we didn't stop to charge. Single, yes. single driver One shift. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> Minor detail. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's, it's not like 500 miles, like, with no load, with special aero and special everything. It's, like, fully loaded. Yeah, getting a truck to go 500 miles was never particularly an issue. The problem was that the battery that you would need to do that would be so big that it would basically eat into the cargo that you would be carrying. As an internal reference, the battery that they would be putting on the Tesla Semi would be about five times larger than the one they were claiming they were going to put on the Roadster. And of course, Tesla have still not unveiled how much cargo the actual Tesla semi can haul. And given how proud they were of Matt actually not lying to people for once, and the fact that they didn't actually mention the cargo the thing could haul at all, I think it's safe to say that it's terrible. So we'll just move on from there. Now they covered absolutely every feature that the truck had, down to the tiniest minutiae of how they designed the cup holders and the wireless charging. I think they even took like a bunch of like the various cups and put them in CAD and you'll see them like put them in various cup holder sizes and places. Got the plugins, the wireless charging, everything they need on the uh, electronic side as well. Yep. So I think it's safe to say that they covered absolutely every feature that the truck could offer. Omitted from the event, though, were details around the economics, million-mile guarantee, and autopilot features announced at the original 2017 unveiling. So now let's go back to 2017 and hit the bullshit buzzer. Every time a feature is promised that was never delivered. To the Welcome to the Tesla Semi Truck event. I hope you like what you see. Everything that this, this truck can do um, it, it blows my mind, I think it'll blow yours. Uh, a pickup truck version of the Tesla Semi. It's a pickup truck that can carry a pickup truck. <laughs> so, now, everything just works. The, the moment you get the truck, it's got everything. And it'll seamlessly, seamlessly integrate with, with all the fleet systems, things that are really important uh, to, to the trucking industry. And you'll be able to go anywhere uh, in, with a, a Tesla uh, consumer vehicle. The same will be true of the Tesla Semi. You'll be able to travel any, anywhere in the world on the Tesla Megacharger network. And over half a decade later, the uh, Tesla-owned megacharger network contains precisely zero megachargers. 
And, uh, and, and that means we can guarantee the electricity rates because these will be solar powered mega chargers um, that uh, charge to a Tesla power pack is 24 7 guaranteed low electricity. Yeah, the full extent of this bullshit is hard to grasp. Not only are the only mega chargers installed at Frisolet as part of a government grant, and merely that one charging station, which was probably like a cluster of four or something, they reportedly cost about $6 million a pop. Well, according to this article sent to me by Patrick Boyle during the making of this video. And, uh, thanks for that, Patrick. Which gels immediately, since Musk is currently asking the US taxpayer for another $100 million to install merely nine charging stations on one trucking route. And that is after Musk said that all government subsidies should be deleted, including those for charging networks. What about what about the the support though for the charging network? I mean, there are there are parts of this bill. And, and, no. No. I mean, you know, do, do we need support for gas stations? Six months later, Musk, can I have a hundred million dollars, please, of uh, subsidies for uh, my charging station? Uh, we don't. So. Uh, there's no there's no need for this uh, for, for support for a charging network. I would delete it. Delete. <laughs> well, at least he wasn't hypocritical enough to sit in front of a factory that wouldn't even exist without government subsidies and say, <laughs> just just delete all subsidies. Okay. All right. I'm literally, I'm literally saying get rid of all subsidies. Uh, but I, I I think just generally. Uh, I'm in favor of deleting subsidies. But back to 2017, where uh, Musk is confidently telling us that we will be able to go anywhere on the Tesla mega charger network. And because these, these, these mega chargers are so powerful, your truck is running on sunlight. Every truck we sell will have enhanced autopilot as standard. Uh, even if you're in the truck and you have a medical emergency, the truck will stay in lane and gradually come to a halt and put on the emergencies. If it doesn't hear a response from you, we'll actually call emergency services and get an ambulance. It, it's gonna take care of you, it's gonna take care of other cars, it's gonna take care of pedestrians. This is a massive increase in safety. Yeah, the truck does precisely none of that. The truck will automatically stop jackknifing because it's got independent motors on each wheel and it'll dynamically adjust the torque on each wheel so that jack jackknifing is impossible. <laughs> and that's why we are guaranteeing that this truck will not break down for a million miles. There is maybe only two dozen of these things on the road, and the internet is replete with images of these things broken down by the side of the road. We are guaranteeing it won't break down for a million miles because it has four independent motors. You can lose two of those four motors, and the truck will still keep going. In fact, even if you only have two... Wow, so these things must have had quadruple motor failures, because that's the only way Musk can think of that an electric truck could break down. In fact, now might be a fun time to go back to that article that I mentioned earlier. Now, even taking this with a healthy degree of skepticism, it seems to hit a lot of the right points, like it gets the cost of the mega charges about right. And as we'll see later, it explains why the Tesla Semi is the slowest truck on the road. So one of the funnier allegations is that PepsiCo did a PR event where they were driving a Tesla Semi 500 miles, but the truck was so unreliable that they had to take two backup trucks haul on diesel trucks to be swapped out as the Tesla Semis progressively failed. They also suggest that pushing the range on these batteries completely trashes the battery pack. Again, completely plausible in that this is a known problem with all rechargeable batteries. And this thing is like 10 or 20 regular car battery packs stuck together. Basically, as the pack gets near to empty, if you draw power from basically a flat battery, you will destroy the battery. So it becomes a balancing act that you've got like a 20 odd car type batteries and if you don't balance the draw from them correctly when the truck wants to eat a megawatt, you'll basically trash the battery pack. As we'll see later, this also gels with why the Tesla Semi is the slowest truck on the road. 
They allege that Tesla uses car parts in the Tesla Semi, which leads to all sorts of problems, which I instantly believe because that's what they must have done to make this thing back in 2017. And this is the feature I like best. Thermonuclear explosion proof glass. <laughs> and this is the feature I like best. Sure? Yeah. Thermonuclear explosion proof Oh my fucking glass. Thermonuclear explosion proof <laughs> glass. <laughs> the economics of trucking matter tremendously. If if you have a truck if your cost per mile is too high, it, it doesn't make economic sense. You can't make it work. I want to be clear, this is from day one. So it, from day one, having a Tesla semi will beat a diesel truck on economics. Day one. Nope. That was all bullshit too. And this is at this is a worst case scenario. So it gets better than this. This is the this is the this is the worst case scenario comparison. This is taking max vehicle gross. It's it's going at 60 miles an hour, um, and it's assuming $250 ga gasoline price. We're guaranteeing a seven cent kilowatt wholesale price. There is no guarantee wholesale price from Tesla, and they currently charge not seven cents for a kilowatt hour, but 50 cents. So the reality of the economics is it's actually about seven times worse than Elon Musk's worst case scenario. The economics of trucking matter tremendously. If, if, you have a tr if your cost per mile is too high, it, it doesn't make economic sense. You can't make it work. You know, rather than being on a par with conventional trucks, they cost about seven times more. I want to be clear about that. This is real, these are real numbers. And it only gets better than this. This is the worst case scenario. One, a Tesla truck considered by itself beats other diesel trucks. But what if you have a convoy? So what if you have two, uh, trucks, two trucks following? This, so it's, what this means is, it's, it's not just economic suicide to use one diesel truck, it's economic suicide for rail. This beats rail. Yeah, Musk isn't just content with bullshit promises, he needs to make ultra bullshit promises. And that's, that's I think, really quite, quite profound. Um, we're, we're confident that this is a product that is better in every way from a feature standpoint that wins on economics against uh, uh, diesel trucks in the worst case scenario, and that defeats rail um, in a convoy scenario. And pr production begins 2019. So you order now, get the car, the truck in two years. And I'll stop there, because I think the point's clear. But that was merely hitting the bullshit buzzer for about one quarter of Musk's Tesla semi-unveil event and guaranteed there will be musk fans already in the comments below frantically typing out how i'm the bad guy because i have a hate boner for musk or that i'm just obsessed with him guys you just listen to the man who became the richest guy in the world based on claims like this this beats rail which you now know. You know it's all vaporware. You know he is lying directly to your face. And do you think I'm the bad guy for showing you that he's lying to your face? And what, you think I should just let this slide because uh, he got rich by lying to people? Yeah, you might not understand some of the fundamental things that this channel covers. But there's just one more thing I want to touch on. Performance. So we have a, an acronym we came up with um, that uh, I think really, really describes the performance well. Uh -huh. So let's scroll the clock forward five years to take a quick look at that video that they were so proud that they didn't actually fake it. And what we find is the Tesla Semi appears to be the slowest truck on the road, even going up hills, being burned off by tankers. Seriously, it overtakes like once on its entire 500 mile journey. Meanwhile, it's overtaken by dozens of trucks. You know, at Tesla, we don't make slow cars. 
Now, Tesla released a video showing this 500 mile drive, and this is a pretty telling video in which you believe the video is showing the driver at 60 miles per hour or greater. That means only 15% of the time in the video, based on my estimate, are you actually driving at or above 60 miles per hour. Uh, we don't make this, so this thing has crazy power relative to a, a diesel truck. One thing we care about Tesla is we really care about performance. We want, it, we want a, a vehicle that feels incredible, that accelerates like nothing else. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Elon Musk, inventor of the slowest truck on the road, which is probably why the whole release presentation wasn't so much about showing you what the truck could actually do, but telling you how it was totally rad and awesome, man and how great the cup holders were. You know, the sort of thing that you would do with a barely functional product. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. We want to make the truck an awesome driving experience, uh, a game changer because of all the awesome innovations that have happened. I mean, what I find actually really wild about this. I mean, the team's done a lot of awesome work. I mean, yes. we, we did all this work. It was really cool to watch them put, I mean, I think they even took like a bunch of like the various cups and put them in CAD and you'll see them like. Look, true story. This video started out as an uber short video debunking Musk's recent claims on the Joe Rogan podcast it's about how ventilators caused more damage than coronavirus. Um, and that this, this is actually what is damaging the lungs, not COVID. It's the treatment. It's the cure is worse than the disease. Not seeming to understand that you don't put people on ventilators unless they can't breathe. And people who can't breathe have a 100% fatality rate. You know, when your lungs are struggling, you know, say because you've damaged them with some sort of viral infection, your blood oxygen goes down. So you put people on pure oxygen. But sometimes even on pure oxygen, your lungs are in sufficiently bad shape that they still won't hack it. And at that point, you've got to switch people to a ventilator. Because if you can't keep your blood oxygen levels up, you're going to die. So you don't put people on a ventilator unless they're basically already dead. So then I, I actually posted on Twitter at the time and said, hey, uh, I'm, what I'm hearing from Wuhan is that they made a big mistake in putting people uh, on intubated ventilators for an extended period. Yeah, sure, Mas. The guy who thought ventilators caused the damage and not the disease that had crippled their lungs to the point where their blood oxygen was so low that they were almost dead already. Um, and that this, this is actually what is damaging the lungs, not COVID. It's the treatment. It's, the cure is worse than the disease. Thinks that it's the ventilator that caused the damage to their lungs. Not seeming to realize that basically 100% of these people would have died without a ventilator. But don't worry, guys. This guy is making it a life support for your spaceship. And they, I, just people yelled at me and said, I'm not a doctor. I'm like, yeah, but I do make spaceships with life support systems. What do you do? <laughs> wow, Musk designs the life support for his spaceships. Uh, good luck, Tim. Think you're going to need it. And uh, give my regards to the Titanic. Uh, sorry, the moon. And that's today's video, which started off as a five-minute debunking, which during the research phase led me to watching the Roadster reveal and watching an absolute stunned silence for about 10 minutes thinking, what the hell? This is absolute hype loop on steroids level of vaporware. And it's apparently flown under almost everyone's radar. And if you enjoyed watching it get nuked from orbit, maybe give it a, ooh, that felt good, thumbs up. And if you really like this video, because yeah, there aren't a lot of us doing this, you can support this channel directly through Patreon. And, uh, Thanks for watching.